Welcome back to Game Design with Scratch. We are starting a new game today. It is a platform game, or what some of my students have nicknamed the Pico game. In this video, I'm going to show you how the game works, get you guys all set up with a starter project, and then we'll take a look at the starter project so we know what we have to work with to build this game. Let's get started. In this game, our main character, Pico, must jump onto platforms to reach first a key and then a coin. Pico wins the game when he gets the coin and he loses the game when he falls into the fire. Pico is moved using the arrow keys and if you haven't already, when you finish watching this video, Scroll down this page and play the game a few times so you can get a feel for how it works. So like I said, you move Pico using the arrow keys. Sometimes it's hard for kids to make him jump from one platform to another, so to do that, make sure you hold down the right or left arrow keys and then press the up arrow key at the same time. Now, as you can see, if Pico is not touching a platform, he will fall until he reaches a platform. And that's really the main element of a platform game like this or like Mario. We have to program our character to always fall unless he's on a platform. So let's get you guys all set up with the starter project. Below this video, enter your email address and the download for your starter project should get to you pretty much instantaneously. So I'm going to head over to my inbox, open up my email and click this download button. This will download a starter project with this .sp2 extension, either into your downloads folder or some other folder where you choose to save it. Now let's open up Scratch, click on Create to create a new project, and then go to File, Upload from your computer, navigate to the place where you save this file, and click Open. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the contents of the current project, and yes we do, so click OK. Okay, let's take a look at what we have to work with. Behind Pico, if you go to scripts, you will find three blocks of code. We'll use the bigger blocks of code in step two to help Pico move more smoothly. And this color green is touching color black block is going to be used to stop Pico from falling when he's reached a platform. So just to give you a quick preview, this first color here is the exact shade of green as Pico's costume. And this color here is the exact shade of black as the line at the top of each of the platforms. Now when these two colors touch each other, we know that Pico is on a platform. So in our code, we are going to tell the computer to always check if these two colors are touching each other. And if they are, we're going to tell the computer to stop Pico from falling and have him stay where he is, which is on a platform. So I put these two colors already in there to make it easier for you guys. So try not to click inside these squares because that will cause the colors to change and then the computer will use the wrong colors. But if by accident you happen to change these colors, I will tell you in step one how to change it back. So don't panic. I hid the colors in one of the backdrops for the stage. So you will be able to grab them from there if needed. Okay, let's grab these blocks from the top and drag them to the corner so they don't bother us. I'm going to grab this block on the actual block and not on the colors because remember we don't want to mess up those colors. Okay, let's look at our stage. This first backdrop is the background for the game and the second one, like I said, I just put in there in case you guys need to get those colors back. Our starter project came with six different sprites. We have Pico, the key, the coin, the fire, and then we also have a brick sprite and a messages sprite. The brick sprite will be used to create a moving platform. So this is a little trick. This platform right here in the middle looks like it's a part of the background image, but really it's its own sprite, which means we can control it and give it instructions. So we're going to tell it to constantly move from side to side and that's going to make the game just a little bit harder. 
And last but not least, we have this messages sprite, which has two costumes, and we're going to have it hide for most of the game. But when the game is won, we're going to show this costume. And when the game is lost, we're going to show this costume. And I think we're ready to start building this game. So when you're ready, click the go to step one button and start building.